A place we're not allowed to reveal in Hollywood. It's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. Wow, you're bad. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for joining in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. We are together again on the radio with wide open telephones on this Friday. Anything goes here, anything at all. We can talk about anything that's on your mind. It could be anything we discussed on the air this week. Anything you think we should have talked about, you can call up, yell, scream, complain, jump up and down. It's all fair game as long as you're absolutely fascinating. If you're not, we kick your ass the hell off the telephone. All you do is call 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Now, we're going to get to this call coming up. And you don't want to miss this, because do you remember we had a guy on the air named Steve? And Steve was the guy who was the boyfriend for five years of an Armenian-American girl. They were also in business together. And then one of Steve's friends happened to notice that uh, his girlfriend had a profile on a an online dating site. Uh, it's kind of like Match.com, except it's where you meet Armenians. And uh, we had quite the drama play out on the air. When, <laughs> when uh, I guess uh, Steve was telling his girl that she had to get out. And you heard a lot of weeping on the air. Remember that call? Well, Steve has a follow-up that's going to knock your socks off. Apparently, was there a gun involved? And somebody coming over? Oh, boy. This, this is not pretty. So we got the details coming up on that. Steve is going to update us on what's been happening since that last appearance on our show. Meantime, let's get to your calls here at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's 1-800-5800-866. Is line 8 broken, or are we just not picking up the phones here? Oh, okay. You can pick it up now. <laughs> let's go to your calls now. Let's say hi here to Scott on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Scott. How you doing, bud? I'm doing okay. So, so that song was awesome. How do I get that as like a ringtone or something? Oh, guys just want to get laid? Uh, I don't know if it's it, 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 it is hot off the presses. It was just released. You guys have that on LimeWire or something? Uh, we we don't have it anywhere yet. I mean, literally, that's the first time it appeared anywhere. You guys need to put it on your website or something. Well, I, I'll tell you what we are going to do. We're going to play it again in the 5 o'clock hour here, L.A. time. So if you uh, missed it, you can record it or you can uh, do whatever you want to do with it. But it's coming up again in the 5 o'clock hour. Really? Really. All right. Hey, thank you, Tom. Take me out with a bong in and thank you, Jesus, please. There you go, Scott. Thank you, Jesus. 1-800-5800-TOM. We're coming to Steve here in just a couple of minutes and you will get to hear what uh <laughs> what happened to Steve after his Armenian girlfriend was told she had to vacate the premises this is Tony on the Tom like his show hello Tony How are you doing, Tom? doing okay nice Friday <clears throat> hey I was just calling to see if uh you had any offers or uh, we're thinking about going to sound Art radio you know, I, this is a question I answer regularly. I used to answer it more often when Howard Stern first went to satellite radio. Yeah. But um, it's a question I get all the time. Huh. Um, what do you do for a living, Tony? Construction. Construction. Yeah. Are you working on a particular project right now? Yeah, down in Long Beach, redoing streets. Well, down across from Staples Center, they are building a Ritz-Carlton it's a big project. Have you thought about going down there and doing construction over there? Uh, nope. Why not? Uh, 
I'm stuck where I'm at. Oh. I got a good job. Stick where you, I'm you at. You got a good job, so you want to stick where you're at. Well, why wouldn't I just assume that because there's another construction project that you'd be going down and working on that? Rich yeah, Carlton's right. probably a nice building. You're probably a good-paying job. Now, you have no interest in that? Uh, no. We'll okay. I'm at. Well, the reason I, reason I went through that exercise with you, Tony, is because that's what you just did to me. You just asked me if I'm going to satellite radio. Why would I do that? I'm yeah. here. People assume that because it exists, that means we all need to go to it. But just like you don't need to go work on the Ritz-Carlton Project downtown, I don't need to go to satellite radio. You go wherever the money is, and if you've got a good job, you stay, and I'm I'm enjoying myself here. Excellent. Excellent. And they're paying me a lot of money. A lot of money. So Excellent. that's that's what I did. But I, I'm, I'm not trying to embarrass you. I'm trying. I'm so other people won't keep asking this question about whether I'm going to satellite radio. I try to answer it in this manner so they will understand that just because there is satellite radio doesn't mean we all have to be on it. Oh, yeah. I, I, it's just another company or in this case, two companies that are trying to merge into one company. And, uh, you know, if any company that offers me the, the most money when I'm uh, coming to the end of a contract, that's where I work. I used to work for another company, and then CBS made me an incredible offer, and so I left that company after 13 years, and I came here. I'm, I'm available to the highest bidder. That's how it works. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Jessica on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Jessica. I just wanted to call in and uh, thank you for all of your wonderful advice all the time. Uh, my dad actually listened to the show when I was a little girl in the car when we'd commute. And uh, so I started absorbing your wisdom at an early age. And he's probably listening right now. So hi, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, yeah, you had a show a while ago just uh, talking about how we've been influenced, women have been, and I didn't get through. So I just wanted to call and say thank you, and you're doing a great job. I'm here to help, Jessica. Thank you for the call. All right. Do we have Steve ready? Let's get Steve on the air here. Steve! Are you there, Steve? Tom? Yes. Buddy. How's it going? It's going. It's going. It's it's been quite uh it's been quite a week, I'll be honest with you. Now, last we talked to you, you were on the air for close to half an hour, which is a long time for a call to be on the air. And uh we were talking about your girlfriend and do I have the facts right? You you've been together 5 years? Yeah, we've we've known each other 5 years and you know, kind of dated and you know, we're together more or less over the course of a uh, majority of that time. And, uh, all right, so there you are. She's your girlfriend. She's also become your business partner. Exactly. I started a business uh, probably about two and a half, three years ago, and um, brought her in to, to assist with um, marketing and accounting and some things like that. Now, um how did, and this is the part that I'm, I'm fuzzy on, You, a, a friend of yours, is he Armenian? Yeah, he happens to be Armenian. Oh, I, and so he, he was cruising a website, like an online dating site for Armenians. Exactly, Tom. And he, Look, sent, he sent you a link? Yeah, exactly. It's, it's you know, I, I guess more or less she doesn't know that I what kind of friends I have. I, I kind of go to work and do my own thing, but uh, one of my buddies is an Armenian, and... Uh, and yeah, he was cruising looking for some chicks, and and uh, I mean, it's been it's been it's been comedy. I mean, I haven't been able to stop laughing. It's it's been pretty funny. <laughs> it's like when my uh, so my guy friends found my ex girlfriend on Match dot com. I mean, we we were getting a a, a real knee slapping uh, laugh riot over here out of uh, reading her profile. Oh, it's it, it's 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 hilarious, Tom. Let's let's look at it like this here. First of all, just to, you know, I got to be careful about what I say. Her brothers were actually listening to the call. So big shout out to all the Armenians out there. Uh, we do have some, uh, some some friends. So, yeah, her brother was listening to the call. So it's it's been a mess. It's been kind of messy. But um, 
you know, I've, I've been pretty quiet about things all, all right, the time. We're gonna get to we're gonna get to the mess in a second here. You you read the profile and then you told her she had to get out, and she didn't know why. But once you got to to be screened, if I recall the story correctly, and you were explaining to Dean why you wanted to get on the air, she overheard it, and then she yeah. started freaking out and crying, and then started calling people. That's that's pretty funny. Yeah, I, I didn't tell her that I actually knew what was going on. So uh, the kicker was that she didn't know that I knew. And, you know, I'd come home from work and I'd ask her a few pressing questions just to see where honesty was. And, and uh, yeah, she was she was nothing but a, a, a good, wholesome girl. And I kind of just kept that card to myself. And I, I thought, hey, what's a better way to uh, drop this chick's draw, uh, jaw than to, you know, call Tom, you know, call yeah. him deep. Now, um, you know, it's interesting. Last week, maybe you overheard some of the calls that came in after you left. But Actually, uh, well, go ahead. Yeah, I, I did. I did hear a few of the calls that came in. I imagine turn on the radio. It was a lot of stuff going on, but I I did listen to a couple of calls and I, I appreciated the uh, the uh, you know, response. It's yeah, because crazy. because we had Armenians calling in and telling us what she was saying. That's right. And I guess she does. She owe you nine thousand dollars. She owes somebody nine thousand dollars. I kept. I got a lot of emails about that. Well, we've. I guess there's there's going to be some some money issues that are going to have to come up, uh, and we're going to have to sort out. So, and according to the callers, she also blamed her mother for having the idea that she should start looking for an Armenian. Yeah, well, it, it also it's, it's kind of untimely. Uh, I guess. Well, I'll I tell mean, you what. I tell you, I don't want. I, I don't want to. Uh, we have to take a break, and I don't. I don't want to break in the middle of your story. But I'm just kind of teasing what's coming up here. Uh, oh yeah. So, so the bottom line here is that uh, the, the caller said, yeah, she, she was blaming her mom. I guess she was talking to her mom, and she was blaming her mom for uh, suggesting the idea that she needs to be with an Armenian. Yeah, her, her mom's a handful, Tom. All right, we'll take a break, and when we come back, we're going to find out what happened after you hung up the phone. Yeah, C sounds good. It's pretty outrageous. All right, when we come back, you'll find out what happened to Steve after he called in. <laughs> Tom Likas, 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom Likas, 1-800-5800-866. He wanted to live with me, but, you know, the worst thing that he ever did was have me listen to you because the more I listen to you, the more I realize that he's retarded. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. Wide open telephones at 1-800-5800-TOM. Your telephone call coming up. Well, now we're going to get the, the dirt on Steve and what happened after he called the program. He called the program after he had kicked out his girlfriend and we got to hear her weeping on the air. She was apparently cruising around a, a website where you look for Armenians. So, Steve, uh, she had brothers listening to the show. Is that uh, how this all got started? Well, yeah, that's what I ended up finding out is that, you know, I mean, if you thought it was just going to be me and her at the house, no chance, man. The, the cavalry started rolling in. So uh, tell me exactly what happened. Uh, well, I, my buddy came over, and we were going to head out to dinner. We were going to go hang out, and she never got off the phone. She's saying, my mom is on the way. Uh, she'll be here in 20 minutes. 30 minutes goes by, 40. I mean, so we're sitting around here waiting, and I'm just like, I feel like I can't take off under these circumstances, you know. It, it, so the mother shows up, and she comes straight in through the back door and cracks me in the jaw, man. What? Yeah. It's like, you ever been sucker punched by a gypsy? It's it's kind of fun. It's not very nice. Yikes. Yeah. Yeah, she came right after me, and, I mean, the, the drama went from there, so. Did she uh, say why she was doing it? Uh, leave my daughter alone. I just, I mean, anything, I, you know, a thick accent. She was just, she was just going, I mean, I feel like, you know, Vanya was hyping her up the whole time on the way down. 20 minutes turns into, you know, 45 minutes before she shows up. And, I, I, you know, she's in traffic. And all I know is by the time she gets to my house, she comes straight at me. She gets in my face. She pushes me and she cracks me in the jaw. Wow. Were you yeah. seriously injured or just in pain? Look, the, the whole thing was 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 just was a sh 
show. It was like drama. It was just, you know, I'm not really about that. So I, I was pretty aggravated, and I, and I realized if I did anything but come Oops. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it could, it could cause you some problems because usually when you call the cops, they either take both people in or they're going to take the guy in. Yeah, and I've, and you know, I've, the girlfriend has told me that, you know, two or three times. Um, we had an incident the week before, and, you know, that's what she said is that, you know, who are they going to believe? They're going to believe you or they're going to believe a, a, a pretty young girl. So I don't like to get into that stuff. Luckily, my, my, my buddy was there. And he saw the whole thing. So uh, I had a few cards in my favor. All right. So the mother came over and cracked you in the jaw. Then what happened? I uh, grabbed the phone. I called the cops. And, you know, it just, you know, it's there's a lot of yelling and screaming going on in the house. It was it was a mess, Tom. Did the cops come? Cops came. Cops came. I think... Barney Fife showed up and his and his partner. It was really silly. Uh, they kind of, you know, which way did she go? Like, they came through the front door, and she weasels her way out the back door. Uh, tell them I've been assaulted, and which way did she go? Which way did she go? It was it was more or less, a, you know, it was more or less a joke. Uh, so the cops did come, and uh, they tried to keep the peace, and... Um, you know, more or less, the cops actually came and left probably three times that night. So, really? This night was, this was not a, a you know, a two-hour thing where she grabs her, grabs her makeup, she grabs her jeans, and she grabs her rubbers and, and gets out of there. I mean, I don't think I got to bed till probably 3.30 in the morning, 4 o'clock in the morning. Now, what were they saying to you? Cops were saying that... Uh, that I was preventing this from going quicker, and I just have to tell them that I'm not on your time, buddy, and I'm not going to just let her grab whatever she wants and just run for it. So I'm on my time, and if I have to check every bag before it leaves here, that's what I'm going to do, but I'm on my time. If you have another call, hey, take your call, buddy. So it, it got a little bit antagonistic. Uh, she's kind of, you know, played the, the drama up and it's just been, you know, she just has a way to stir things up. So, and, was, and what did, what did her mother say when she was uh, done cracking you in the jaw? You know, to be honest with you, her, the, uh, the girlfriend starts yelling at the mother to stop it. Just leave, just leave. You know, he's calling the police, just stop it. They're, they started yelling at each other more or less. So I, I kind of got out of it. I kind of weaseled my way out of it. Grabbed the phone and just in, in tried to engage with uh, the 911. So what did your girlfriend or any of the other people, the brothers or whoever, what did any of these people say to you? I mean, what did you do wrong? Well, Tom, I think I've been a, a pretty decent guy this, this whole time. You know, I don't, I don't think I did anything no, wrong. No, no, I understand that you didn't, but what did they say you did wrong? What do you, when, you, they, when, 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 when her mother came over, cracked you in the jaw. And then the brothers, they were listening to the show, and they heard you on the air. Did they have something to say to you besides physical violence? I mean, did they say you were wrong or you were bad or you were mean? What did they say to you? Mother, the mother was, was more or less, you know, saying that, uh, uh, you know, why are you doing this to my daughter? Why are you doing this to my daughter? Doing what? Kicking her out, I guess, Tom. I mean, <laughs> kicking her out? Did you tell her why you were kicking her out? You know what? I actually I didn't. I didn't. You know, I'm not the guy for the drama, Tom. No, I understand. Oh, yeah. yeah. So you refused to engage. You refused to talk to her. I've been quiet as a church mouse all week, Tom. Look at that. Did the brothers say anything? Anything, or did they threaten you? What happened? Uh, brother, their brother's actually pretty level-headed. He, he came by. He wanted to come in, and uh, you know, I refused anybody to come in my home. So uh, he had to stay outside. He was there for hours. And, what What uh, did he say? He, he he said he wanted to come inside and and you know help her get her stuff out. I wasn't having it. You know it's 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 enough trying to keep an eye on one chick grabbing a bunch of stuff. I'm not going to have a whole family in my house grabbing and running for for it. So it wasn't going to happen. How did you find out that the brothers were listening? Oh, she told me. You know, after we we got off the phone, uh, me and you, Tom. You know, the drama kept going on. She was on the phone uh, repeatedly talking to various people. And 
uh, at some point it came out that my brother's my brother's heard the whole thing and he's he's on the way down here more you know so i think she had a couple of brothers that were actually listening to her to the show at one point wow now did she ever try to defend what she did or ever explain or what what did she say to you yeah absolutely tom sit down for this one she said it was a lapse in judgment so uh that was her explanation of uh, trying to, you know, find a new romance while she's living with me is that it was a lapse in judgment. Yeah. The lapse yeah. of judgment was getting caught. <laughs> yeah, it was It was a lapse in judgment. So a, a lapse in judgment is, is cruising through a, a yellow light, right? Yeah, well, exactly. Right. Yeah, yeah. She would continue lapsing right along if she didn't get caught. Yeah. Yeah, so... You know, more or less, I felt like, you know, she was preparing to uh, to leave anyway. That That's just what I gathered. You know, she'd been looking into uh, uh, getting some, some night jobs at some gentlemen's clubs and getting back into tutoring and stuff like that. So is she a stripper? No, she's not a stripper, but she's, she's always been playing with the idea to make some extra cash. Unbelievable. So uh, now at this moment, is she still living in your house? Absolutely not, Tom. She, she she vacated that night, and as far as I know, you know she hasn't she hasn't been back inside. You know, I I got to changing locks and repairing the window, and so yeah, I've been I've been pretty busy all week. I didn't know the window broke. How did that happen? That was what she did the the week prior when she. Uh, you know, we had we had a thing the week before where she she basically was trying to break inside the house and she she busted the window to do that. Unbelievable! Are you glad you got rid of her, Tom? I, I haven't missed her yet, so so far I, I don't really have a problem with with not talking to her. I'm not big on drama. I don't like mouth chicks. Any chick that runs her mouth too much is it's just it's you know what it is, Tom. It's a waste. Of, it's a waste of my time. Yeah. And um, have you heard from any of her friends or family since then? Tom, you would never believe, man. My my family has been getting assaulted by her family repeatedly. Physically or, or verbally? Just phone call after phone call after phone call after phone call. It's it's getting the point of harassment, man. I mean, they're, they're calling family members. She's, uh, she's seen at least one of my family members. Um, she's a handful. She, you know, and what what does she tell your family? You know, Tom, I, I really don't get into it, but I, as, as far as I know, you know, they they just talks about how she's always been there for me, and uh, she made a mistake, and just all kind of, you know, just just a bunch of drama, it's a bunch of talk, and I, I really, you know, I'm the last guy to listen to it. I don't engage in any of that stuff. Wow. And and Dean tells me there may have been a racial element to all of this. Well, yeah, you know, I'm I'm African American, I'm a black dude, so, um, you know, Armenians they expect to, well, at least her family they expect uh, an Armenian thing to continue, an Armenian tradition to continue. So, um, there could have been, yeah, I mean, the pressure, the pressure really comes at the end of the year when all the holidays come around. We've got, like, Thanksgiving, and what do people do? They, they, they hang out with their family. Yeah. And right right after that, we've got Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, then her birthday, New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, and then there's, like, an Armenian Christmas, like, wrapped up in there. So with all these family elements and obligations going on, there's a big no-show. His name is Steve, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on a second, Steve. Let me get uh, Eddie on here. Eddie, what do you want to say to Steve? We'll just take a couple of calls here. Hi, Steve. Hi, Tom. Hi. Long time listener. Hey, uh, just out of curiosity, are you Russian or Armenian? Uh, no, Lebanese, buddy. Lebanese. Oh, okay. Uh, you got to be a little bit careful with this kind of people, because I did date a few of Armenian girls, and I had similar problems. So you just got to be careful. I mean, uh just get rid of her, dump that bitch, and just go on, move on. That's all I can tell you. Yeah, I agree. I appreciate the call. Hey, no right. problem. Take care. Thank you, Eddie. Darren on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello. 
All right. Uh, Leo on the Tom Likas show for Steve. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. Hey, I just want to say that I know the reason why the mother hit him because uh, the girl, she was when she was on the phone, but I, what I could hear, she was lying to the mother and she was saying that uh, he, he's not letting me stay here because I can't, I'm not, I'm not paying the rent or something or something with money. That she was lying to him. That's the reason. Yeah, I, I don't know Armenian, man. So I, to be honest, whatever the thing, it it kind of it kind of hyped up the whole situation. And uh, given traffic by the mom, by the time mom showed up, I mean she was she was ready to crack anybody. And uh, you know, so yeah, she gave me a good one. Yeah, uh, I, I hope she. I hope you let her know, man. I hope because she showed all the evidence, all the uh, computer work that you found her profile and everything. So. Yeah, we 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 done a pretty good job of trying to secure uh, everything necessary to just stay protected, at, you know, in this whole situation. Well, uh, Leo, thank you for the call. Steve, keep us informed about this story. Uh, yeah, sounds to me like a pretty outrageous experience. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's painful. So you know, I'm staying focused, and you know, all the guys out there, man, appreciate the the calls and the support, and. Uh, like I said, man, don't don't take any stuff out of these ladies, man. Thanks a lot so much for the call. Thanks for the uh, report, Steve. I really appreciate it. Like 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. If I'm blessed enough to meet my soulmate, why would I go and blow it with marriage? It's the Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. Anything goes here. Hector on the Tom Likas show. Hello. How you doing? Doing okay. Great, great. I just had a quick question, man. Yeah. My son's seven, and. Um, his mom's tripping on me by, he mentioned your show. He's tripping on me. She's tripping on me because he's saying the word sex, and he said he's heard it on your show. The word Is sex? Cool? Yeah, sex and you know, other inappropriate for his age. You know, he's seven, so, you know, just, just let me know what's appropriate. Is it, is well, it, appropriate is something you have to decide for yourself now. Uh, if it were me, and of course I don't have children, and uh, some people probably think that's a good thing, but if it were me, I have no reason to protect a child from knowing what sex is at age seven. Oh, cool. Great. That's, uh, now, again, I'm not a parent, and I don't claim to be an expert, but right. uh, that's that's how what I believe. I, I do not believe there's any reason kids shouldn't know these things. Little girls are getting pregnant at eight years old nowadays. Oh, we've read stories about that. Eight and nine. We had a woman call this show about two years ago. I'm not making this up. She was beside herself. She didn't know what to do. She had a six-year-old daughter who was fully developed. Are you kidding? No. At six? At six. She had to take her six-year-old who was in first grade to buy a bra... And she also said that uh, she was doing inappropriate things, like, you know, sitting on older guys' laps and looking like she had sexual needs, which, by the way, that happens when you physically mature. And she didn't know how to handle it or what to do. Now, this is uncommon, but the point I'm making to you is there's lots of stuff happening with kids now that wasn't happening 20, 30 years ago. They mature faster. They are much more aware of sex. And and my opinion is there's no age too young for kids to know about this stuff, uh, if only so that they don't get in trouble. Right. I mean, school, main problem. There's other kids around and he's saying those words and, you know, about their parents, you know. Well, well, well just, my opinion, your... you can certainly sit down with your son and you can explain to him what what, what you can talk about in school and what you can't. Cool, cool. Uh, you can do that, but there's no reason he shouldn't have the information. And by the way, the word sex is not vulgar. 
Right, right. Which I, I figured, of course. Wow. Well, thank you. I, I, that's where I'm coming from. I, I think the more kids know at the youngest possible age, the less likely it is they're going to knock up the girlfriend or catch an STD or end up paying child support, being a parent at 14, and all these things that are happening all around us. Right. Yeah, I just want to prepare myself for what really, because I'm going to go meet with her, you know what I'm saying, and talk about us three and talk about it and... Just wanted a little heads up. Yeah. Now, if you have custody issues, you might want to discuss this with your attorney. I'm sorry. Uh, are you? Uh, this is your uh, uh, your is this your ex wife we're talking about, the mother of your right. kid? Yeah. Right. All right. So, if you have a possible custody issue involved here, like if you think that would be a problem, be sure to consult with your attorney about this. Cool. 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 I'll write that down. Cool. All right, thanks, Tom. Thank you, Hector. Appreciate the call. Sometimes people are just looking for an excuse to to wrest custody away from you or some such. 1-800-5800-TOM. Wide open telephones on the Tom Likas show. It's James. Hello. Hey, how's it going? Okay. All right. Okay, so I had a, a quick question. I want your opinion on this about basically online flirting because we're in the Internet age. And uh, I was looking on my girlfriend's computer, and I saw that she had one of those. She had visited one of those online dating sites. Um, I'm not sure as to what extent she has, because I didn't want to, like, then, like, put on my FBI hat and, you know, see everything that she's ever done. But still, uh, like, on Facebook, she added the application that says, like, who, who thinks you're cute? And, like, the person will anonymously talk to you or whatever. You know, and, and so I was just wondering what you thought about if a girl's, you know, checking out that sort of. I think if a girl, right. I think if a girl has a Facebook page, uh, she's still leaving her options open. Well, Facebook's more like, I mean, I have, that's like everybody's on that. That's, you know, like the younger crowd. It's kind no, of no, like no, 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 no. The younger crowd that's looking to hook up. I don't know. I don't think I agree with that. Okay. I, I Look, I've been on Facebook. I know what Facebook is all about. I know. Yeah. And I'm telling you, people hook up on Facebook. Hmm. I don't know. I mean, I'm a naturally paranoid, you know, person sometimes when it comes to something like that. And I think that it's because in past relationships, I was unfaithful. And now this is one I'm really serious about. We've been dating like a year and a half. So, you know, I don't want to be looking through rose-colored glasses, but... Well, you are. Yeah. I mean, think about it. She's on dating websites. She's on Facebook flirting with people. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I don't think it's so much flirting. I think it's just... For me, I feel like it's curiosity. Who thinks you're cute? Think Who thinks you're cute? Not. What do you think that is? Who thinks you're cute? Yeah. What do you think that is? Well, could that be curiosity? I mean, Curiosity about what? I'm curious, too, but that doesn't mean I'm going to... I mean, who cares who thinks she's cute? <sighs> Guess what? She's supposed to be your girlfriend. It doesn't matter what other people think. That's true. Hmm. Okay, so what? Okay, so then I guess Plan B, I'd, I'd have to like mention something to her. Like, should I tell her it bothers me, and I don't think she should go on that, or should I? You, know? I, I, you can't make people do things. What I would do if it were me, I uh-huh. would say, you have a right to do whatever you like. And if you want to be on Facebook, I think that's fantastic. But I can't date anybody who's on Facebook. I can't have a girlfriend who's on Facebook. So, I'm but that'd be hypocritical because I'm on it as well. Why are you on it? Well, we. I mean, it's a good way to keep in contact. With oh, stop it. You know, this and... is the biggest load of crap. Oh, it's a good way to keep in contact. Ever heard of a telephone? <laughs> Ever heard of email? It's a good way to keep baloney. It's a good way to keep in touch. Stop. Yeah, well. I How did know, people I mean, keep in touch? How did people keep in touch before MySpace and Facebook? Uh, I guess letters, telephone. Telephone calls, emails. Yeah. Instant yeah, messages. Are, are those, a, aren't those, aren't those, no, no, it's not that things are changing. People 
hook up on these services. That's what they're there for. Uh, by the way, they all have some premise to them, so women will participate. Classmates.com. Come on. Oh, I've been wondering what happened to the president of the math club ever since I left high school. I wonder if I could discuss an algebraic question with him. Yeah. And people who are on uh, classmates.com are there for one reason. Mm. To find all the people they couldn't uh, they, they couldn't bang in high school. <laughs> yeah. Stop with this. Oh, we're just keeping in touch. You know, we're scrapbooking and we're sending pictures of our class. You know what? Everybody you wanted to stay in touch with from from high school, you did stay in touch with. Yeah, I think I don't know. I mean, if if uh, if I'm on it too and she's on it and we you know message each other and stuff, it's. How about you just use, but don't you have other messaging programs? Yeah, but I don't feel that it's like a threatening program to have. Great. So she wants to know who thinks she's cute and she's going on dating websites and you don't find it threatening. That's fantastic. Good luck to you. Well, I have to, you have to draw the line, draw the line somewhere. I think, like, if, if I'm on Facebook, she's on Facebook, and it's our friends and family. It is it necessary to be on Facebook. on Facebook? It is not necessary. I'm telling you where this goes. Now, you want to fight with me? Fine. I can't make you change what you're doing any more than you can make her change. But I'm telling you, if you tolerate this, you're going to regret it. Okay, so so let's say I, I just I want to approach her about the second thing, like going to a dating website. Should I say, like, hey, are you curious? Like, or... You know, I just don't feel like I get an, a straight up honest answer, just well, like the, uh, the last caller. You know, again, it, it, do you know if she became a member of a dating website or if she was just looking at profiles? It just looked like it, it was she was exploring it. Hmm. Was she using your computer for this? No, she was using her own. And does she live with you? No, she doesn't. So you were going through her computer and looking at what she's doing when you're not around. Yes, I was. I, I, it was so clearly, I, already, you don't trust her. No, no, that that's not true. Because Why were you doing that? Well, when you type, start typing in uh, a word, there's other things that, that come up. So you can see, like, what you've been searching, what you've been searching for. And so I just... I oh, just what was she searching that. for? What's that? What was she searching for? I don't know. I, I typed in www. and I was typing something, and I, I misclicked on something, uh, you know, when, when the address pops up and finishes right. itself. And so I went to the wrong one, and I was like, hey, this is a dating website. And then so I started looking in the history of uh, what parts of that dating website she was looking at. Yeah, and where was she going? Um, it looked like just just like the the login part, like at the beginning, like it looked like she was just looking through it but not signing up. But still, you know, just the fact that she didn't just click on the wrong thing like I did and then... Well, you realize also right they give you the option of saving your username and password in your computer using a cookie or not. And she probably chose not to. Nah, I don't know. I, I think just from me knowing her, I, I'm pretty sure that it was just curiosity. Right. I think that's curiosity, curiosity about who finds her cute... Uh, chatting with other guys on Facebook. Yeah, it's just curiosity. <laughs> I sense sarcasm. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, don't worry about it. Everything is fine. I don't know. Yeah, good okay, luck. Okay, so and what, I, what I, I be, know you're going to be calling me one day. I know it. Uh, okay, so what would a solution to this situation be? I mean, is it just breaking I, up with her because you looked at it? That's what I do. Time. I don't tolerate that stuff. I mean, I'll, I'll have sex with somebody who's on Facebook or MySpace because clearly those are players. I'm in. But uh, no, nobody who is a girlfriend, nobody who's ever been a wife ever had a profile on there that I know of. And if they did, I, that would be the day I'd be gone. Hmm. It's just a yep. way of keeping in touch. Hmm. That's probably her excuse. Yeah. I'm just keeping in touch. With guys who think I'm cute. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. The Tom Likas Show.